Are you buying or selling a house without an RPR? Could that be a mistake? Let's have a little discussion. Hey everyone, my name is Carson Nielsen. I'm a licensed realtor here in Alberta. I work throughout Alberta. I am with the Live Realty Group and this is our channel. Thank you for uh, for joining us. If you find this information helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Uh, engage us in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer all of your questions. First, uh, I will just wanna talk about today, I am uh, shooting this video, uh, shooting it straight from the hip. My prior videos I shot from a teleprompter, but unfortunately I looked like I was holding back a fart. It makes me look like an idiot and I'm probably gonna look like an idiot today too, but at least I'm gonna be real me and not some uh, frozen statue. So let's talk about an RPR, what it is. An RPR is a little piece of, it is your property. It's a little map or a plan. An Alberta land surveyor comes out, he surveys your property. The RPR will include the property lines plus all permanent fixtures on your property. And these can include things such as your house, your driveway, garage, shed, fence, whatever else might be a permanent improvement. Now, when you build a house on land, it has to meet certain bylaws and those can be setbacks and side yards. Uh, there's certain measurements that wanna be um, put in place and these are all to protect your family and the community. Fire code is a good example, building codes, same thing. Uh, you only want so many houses in one neighborhood so there is a certain amount of property that is allotted to this neighborhood. Sometimes it's more dense so you have narrower properties. Well, with narrow properties, it's harder to build a house so those side yards change slightly. And then with those side yards changing, uh, well, the building code changes slightly. So it is very in depth, but for this purpose, we're just going to talk about RPRs and they're here essentially for the buyer to know what they're buying and also for the seller. I mean, they should know that when they're buying it. And then when they do improvements, they want, you know, you need to update that RPR or you should update that RPR. So the buyer knows what they're buying. It's not the RPR that can collapse the deal but it's the unknowns of what they're buying that can collapse a deal. So you as a seller have a decision to make when you're listing a house. There's different types of RPRs. Uh, there's an existing RPR, which is the RPR is there, it shows the house, but it doesn't show the deck you built or it doesn't show the fence you built. Now there are buyers who will accept that, but it's all depending on the buyer's risk and their comfortability with that risk. So as a seller, it's best to have everything in place and then you can move forward with an updated RPR and you can move forward without any headaches. Uh, a RPR can create a lot of headaches. And that's the whole point of talking to you today is these things get overlooked. In, in my 10 years, it gets, it gets overlooked and people don't seem to understand what it is. And I think that is because you get tunnel vision when buying a house and you get your sights set on the end goal and you might dismiss things that you don't see as important as the time. And maybe it wasn't explained to you how important those things are. We want you guys to know all this information before you move forward. That way you can put your best plan of action into place and have a stress-free sale of your home or a purchase. As a buyer, you want an RPR. You don't want to go on to uh, and buy a house and say there's a detached garage that's not on the RPR. Well, you don't know. Did the seller even get permits to build that garage? The seller didn't get permits and you buy that house. Any issues with that house now, you get to inherit those. You're responsible for those now. And it's better as a buyer just to avoid these altogether. Uh, there's title insurance in place, but we all know what insurance does or doesn't do. So yeah, as a buyer, you want to know what you're buying. So it's pretty important. Your risk level is up to you. It's not up to me. It's also better discussed with your lawyer because the lawyers, while well, lawyers are great because they understand everything and they can explain things a little bit better. Don't take my advice. I won't give you advice on whether you can buy a house with an RPR or without an RPR. That's strictly up to you. Small things can be big things to other people. So guys, my advice to you uh, moving forward as a seller is it's easiest, best for you to have an RPR in place. You don't want to get into a contract and then be like, oh, I didn't have an RPR. And now it's like two days from closing or you don't have an RPR. And now all of a sudden you have to have an RPR. And it's like, oh my God, I can't warrant to the buyer anything about this property because I don't have an RPR. Super, super important to get it done up front. Or if you don't do it up front, at least you know what your plan of action is gonna be. It's our job as realtors to protect you as a seller, protect the other clients as a buyer, uh, to make sure that everybody moves forward happy and, and peacefully. I don't really have a closing point on this. So I'm just gonna say guys, uh, I, I, hope the, I hope that this information was somewhat helpful. And if it wasn't, uh, give me a call or an email, comment on the bottom and and I'll definitely clarify everything. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this clarifies everything. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. And as always, information, we're full of it.